Welcome everybody, I'm Bernice Batu and today I will teach you about the assembly of metadromic sequencing data using Galaxy. Follow one of the tutorials available in the Galaxy training network that you can access by uh, typing training.galaxyproject.org in your web browser. Then you will be redirected to this uh, page where you can find all the tutorials from the Galaxy Training Network and if you scroll down here in the topic sections and you go to metagenomics then you will see uh, several tutorials for metagenomics, uh, for, for metagenomics and in particular the assembly of metagenomic sequencing data that you can find here. So this is the tutorials we will follow today. And the idea of this tutorial is to answer questions uh, why metagenomic data should be assembled, what are the differences between co and individual assembly, and some other topics that at the end of these tutorials you are able to describe what an assembly is, what uh, the difference between co and individual assembly, as I already mentioned, the difference between reads, contact, and scaffold uh, to select appropriate tools to assemble your data, um, and etc. etc. So, uh, metagenomics, uh, as you probably know, involves the extraction, sequencing, and analysis of uh, genomics data from an entire microbiome sample. So, the idea is you take a, a sample, you extract all the DNA from all the organisms present in this uh, sample, and you, se you sequence the DNA without uh, um, knowing where they come from, which organisms you are sequencing. Um, and for analyzing metagenomic data, there are several approaches um, that you can, you can already analyze directly the raw data, the raw read, the DNA, uh, to identify which organisms do you have there. But another approach that you can do is to assemble the reads into longer uh, sequences. Because um, metagenomic, so the, the sequencing of DNA usually cut the, the so doesn't uh, um, extra, uh, get all the sequence from uh, null organisms in one row. So you have only short reads or long reads, but they need to be combined together in longer sequences to may represent the organisms itself. So to do that, we need to use uh, the assembly approach and assembler. So it's mean the computational program that concatenate or stitch together the, the fragment of, of DNA. Um, if you think about it, assembly seems to be quite intuitive. In like, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. So you try to combine the, the different pieces together um, that work together. But uh, this task is really not straightforward. It's more complex than you think. We can think because of the complexity of the genomic and sp uh, of the genomic, especially the repeats. The missing pieces, because when you do uh, next DNA extractions and, and then the sequencing, you don't sequence everything through the whole uh, sequence of all organisms and all the error that can be introduced during sequencing. Um, and when you talk about metagenomic assembly, it's further complicated by the large number volume of data that are produced, the quality of the sequences, um, the fact that uh, all organisms in a sample are not equally represented in the microbial community, so that makes the things more complicated even more. Um, there could be also microorganisms that are closely related, so they are, uh, for example, the same uh, in the same species, but they are not the same strains, for example. And they have really similar genomes, and because uh, assembly is based mostly on the similarity uh, and overlaps, then you can uh, we can assemble uh, sequences that belongs to really closely uh, related organisms, but are from two strains. Um, uh, so the presence of several strains of the same organisms, and also usually the inefficient uh, amount of data for uh, uh, organisms that are from a really really low concentration. So uh, it's really uh, not, it's, so assembly itself is already a complicated task, but with as metagenomic assembly, it's even more complex. Um, here in this box, you can see what are the different uh, strategy for assembly. So that are the main strategy that you use in not just specific for metagenomics, but any type of assembly. So you have the greedy extension, the overlap, layout consensus, or the print graphs. Um, I will not go in tapes in depth in that. Uh, you can take the times and especially read the paper that is uh, mentioned here. But for metagenomic assembly, uh, several tools exist. For example, Metaspates, Megahit, 
Um, and the, these, uh, all these assemblers have uh, different computational characteristics and performance um, that can vary also according to the type of microbiome. For example, if you have a microbiome that have only a few organisms, so a, a low diversity or um, like, oh, I don't know what, or for example, if you have a soil where you have a, expect a high diversity of, of microorganisms, um, all the different assemblers behave differently. And so there is different benchmarking uh, approach that has been used over the years to try to identify which um, assemblers to use in which context. And I can recommend having a look at the critical assessment of metagenomics interpretation initiatives where they do um, um, evaluation of different assemblers. So in these tutorials, we would like to learn how to run a metagenomic assembly tools and evaluate the quality of the generated assemblies. And to do that, we will use data uh, from a study that is called Temporal Shotgun Metagenomics Dissection of the Coffee Fermentation Ecosystems. Um, so what they did is they took the coffee uh, microbiome and, and did a temporal shotgun metagenomic study, so six time points. Um, and they extracted the DNA for these six time points uh, for the microbiome of the coffee. And, and they sequenced everything with Illumina, Illumina MySec, utilizing uh, yeah, the whole genome sequencing. So uh, based on these six original data sets, uh, we generated a mock data set for these tutorials because the original data were quite big and doesn't fit for a purpose of a training. Already you will see, it will already take time to run everything. Um, so please be patient or you can also do something else in parallel of these tutorials or follow another tutorials because the running times are quite long, even if we shotgun, we, we, we generated a smaller data set than the original one. So how to run an, uh, an assembly? So first we need to get the data into Galaxy. Um, and so any a Galaxy analysis starts with its own history. So what you do, you need to go is to go to your uh, favorite Galaxy instance. So for me, for example, I use the Galaxy group. So use galaxy.eu here. You can use, use galaxy.org uh, and or org.au, so the Australian or the US one. And the first things you need to do when you start an analysis is to create a new history. So the history, as you probably know, is on the, on the right side. So the first things to do is to create a new history. So you click on the plus one, create a new history. You give it a name. So you, you, you have the name here. You can click here to rename it. So click on the small icon, um, pencil icon here. And I will rename it um, assembly of, oh, sorry, assembly of metagenomics data uh, minus tutorial. So th this is my name of my new tutorials. Then uh, I need to get the data. Um, so um, instead of going back and forth between the, the two, the different uh, tabular here, um, I will use this um, icon here that you can see in the in the in the Galaxy interface. So if you click here on C Galaxy Training Materials, you will be redirected. It should work. Sorry, it takes a bit of time to load the first time. Oh, yep, here. And you can again go to uh, find all the tutorials that you have in the GTN, so in the Galaxy Training Network. You can find them here directly embedded in Galaxy. So that are, yeah, they are easier to, to, to see. So assembly, sorry, and here. So it's exactly the same. Um, the only thing is you have a better integration and you don't have to move between them. So if you go outside here, if you click outside and you come back here, you will get again the, the, the tutorials itself. So I created a new history, I renamed the history, and now I need to get my data in my history. So for that, I need to import all the raw data, so the FastQ Thinger files um, from Zenodo or from a data library. So currently, uh, the data, um, I, I will use the Zenodo one. So what you can do is click on copy here. You click on the copy, it will copy everything there, and then you can you need to import them yeah, using uh, the importing. So you click on the left side, on the top of the of the of the of the bar on the left side. You click on upload data, and then you click on pass fetch data here you, yeah, on the bottom here, and then here you can uh, past 
here your all the things that has been copied. So again, uh, so and then you can click on start. I will do it again to show you. And once it's there, you can close it and it will add all the data in in the Galaxy story. So again, how what I did is um, I uh, went to the to the tutorials directly inside uh, the Galaxy. Then uh, I click here on copy. It copy everything that is there. Then I went to the upload data here button on the left, top left. Then I click on past fetch data. And here in the box here, I, I passed it uh, all the content that I had in my, uh, that I copied. And I click on start and then I close. So I don't do click on start again because it's already running, at least uh, uploading the data. And then you can close. So it should upload um, in your history. You should have uh, 12 data sets that are available, uh, at least downloading uh, using uh, the link that we gave. Um, and as we said, we have six uh, data sets, but we have 12 data sets. So we have six samples, but 12 data here. Because for each data set, you can see you have, uh, for example, six, uh, 67 underscore 1, 67 underscore 2. So the underscore one uh, seems in, so we have parent data that has been sequenced. So for each day samples, we have two data sets because we have uh, my underscore one is the forward and the underscore two are the reverse reads. So we have a paired end data here for all the six samples. Um, and to organize them, we can do what is used uh, called a paired collections, where we can, with the row reads. So it means organizing the, the samples in a collection. In collection, you can think a collection like a folder in your in your computer. So we try to put everything in a folder. Um, and a paired collection is a way where the collections. Um, the samples are already uh, the the two data sets for each of the samples are already combined with forward and reverse. So we know that these two belongs together, these two belongs together, and these two belongs together. And to do that, um, to 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 organize in the way in that way in Galaxy, what the things you can do is click here on select items, and then click here on the right uh, select all. So you have here select all. And then you have a button that will appear for all selected. And then you have a drop down menu. Uh, and then you say, I want to build a collection, a list of data set pairs. So want, what I want to do is pairing the data sets together. And then from one of the pairs, so I will have six pairs. And from one of the pairs, I want to combine them uh, in a list or a collection. Again. Uh, what I did is, um, so I had my things loading here, slowly, and then I click here on the on the checkbox icon, and then I click on the select all on the right. Uh, then I click, I have a four, all 12 selected, then I can click on build list of datasets pairs, and then uh, I have a, bot, a thing that appears in the middle. And, and what they try to do to create a collection of paired datasets. So by default, it looks if it, it has underscore one for putting that as a forward and underscore two for the reverse. And it created six pairs. And the names is currently the name of the samples here. Another thing, so here I want to remove this FastQ Sanger. Uh, here, so what I did do is for each of the samples, I click on it and I remove, I delete the dot fastq singer here. So I do it six times. It's okay, it's not a lot of data sets, so it's all good. And then here and here. So now I should have six pairs here. And uh, to finish, to create the collection, I need to give it a name. So I will call it raw reads here, because it's original reads, the reads we will start from. And then I can create the collection. And then if you see, uh, then it, the, the things is, is not really available anymore uh, as, as before. So it's not like all the 12 datasets are uh, data or 
files somehow are not visible anymore. They are all in one thing that is called Rorids. And if you click on that Rorids, you have these six, you have six elements here and a pair of data sets here. So you can see here that you have now forward and reverse, for example, for the sample, this sample 77. And if you want to call back, come back, you can click on raw reads here and you go back to the collection. And here on the top, you go back to, um, to the assembly of, yeah, in, in, in the original collection. Um, I think it's still downloading, so we need to take a bit of time, wait. Um, but in parallel, what I can do is start to explain what we need, we will do. So, as I explained before, there is many challenges in metadromic assembly, including the difference in coverage between the samples. So each sample, for example, 77 or 70, 70 will have a different coverage, uh, meaning uh, different... Uh, um, so every, um, every samples or different organisms in, in the same... in different samples, the same organisms in different samples will be co uh, covered differently by the sequencing. Um, so the fact also that different species share conserved regions and there is multi strains of a single species and that can uh, make the com complexify uh, even more the assembly. And to reduce the difference of coverage between assembly, what an approach we can use is called co-assembly, where all the reads from all the samples are uh, merged together uh, before doing the assembly. So then we reduce a bit the diversity, um, we reduce a bit uh, the complexity of the, of the assembly and the differences between samples. So the advantage of co-assembly is we have more data to do the assembly. Um, we, have, we usually have better and longer assemblies and we, have, we can access lower abundant organisms because we have more, more data. But the disadvantage is it's higher computational overhead. Uh, we have the risk of shattering uh, the assembly and we have a risk of increased contamination. Um, so it's not always beneficial to do the co-assembly, um, especially uh, if, there, if the change in the strains can cause the assembly to, to collapse. Um, and when we bin, so that is usually a step that is done after assembly, when we, especially when we want to, do, to build uh, metagenomic assembled genomes, so build full genomes from the metagenomics data, uh, so it's called MAX, so MAX is metagenomic assembled genome. So MAX, um, and usually when you do a building MAX, you want to build MAX, so you do the assembly, then you do binding, so you combine the quantic that has been generated, so the longer sequencing that has been generated by the assembly, and you try to combine, to bind them to, 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 um, to how to say that, uh, yeah, bin them, or bind them, bin them uh, together, so sequences that have a simil similar similarity, and that could belong to the same, for example, species, or the same strain. Um, and when you do co-assembly, the bins, bin the context, so the sequence that has been uh, generated from output of the assembly and that has been in, are, are more likely to be misqualified, misclassified. Uh, they can be uh, treated as population genomes. So um, co-assembly can be reasonable if uh, the data come from the same samples, but just so um, the same samples has been just sequenced several times. Or we have the same sampling events and the same location, um, the same size, or the samples are really related. So in our case, when we do uh, here in the case of the data, we have different samples from the coffee uh, microbiome, but at different sampling time of the fermentation. Is it meaningful to sequence to align to assemble everything in parallel, or do we want to uh, together? So together all the six time points together to really know which micro uh, microbiome we have for coffee fermentation, whatever the, the time point is. Or uh, another approach is we can do is individual assembly. So we, and we uh, assemble each samples one by one. And then we could have a cl more clear uh, information about uh, the different uh, organisms that we can find at different uh, fermentation point. So, um, and so when you, we don't have same sample or same sampling event or a, a related sample, so usually we do, as I said, the approach of individual assembly. 
Uh, in, this in this case, um, we usually have an extra step of dereplication that can be used. So we do an individual assembly and then we combine, we, we compare the different strengths, to, uh, the different generated assembly to, to try to dereplicate, to, to see the, the similarity and then um, identify the gene, the mark that belongs to the same strength, for example. Um, but co-assembly co is more commonly used than individual assembly and, their replication, and then their replication after binning. But in these tutorials, we will really show uh, how to run the individual assembly. Running the co-assembly is really similar approach, um, just a uh, few changes that I can highlight. Um, just a comment, sometimes it can be also useful to run both approach, so to have both individual and, and co-assembly. Uh, and, and use the outputs to really have an overview of everything. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, several tools can be used for metagenomic assemblies, um, but the two that are the most used and the one that uh, seems to uh, pop up the most in, 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 in benchmarking are Metaspace, which is a short read assembler designed specifically for large and complex metagenomic datasets. Um, and Mega8, um, which is a what is called a single node assembler for large and complex metagenomics uh, reads. Also, both of them uh, are using a Durbin graph approach. To um, but they, yeah, they, they they have slightly different uh, performances. Um, so I really recommend you to look at benchmarking uh, papers to identify the one to use in which context. But both are good in a sense. Um, and both are available in Galaxy. The only thing is currently um, Mega8 is the only one that can be used in an individual mode for several samples. So uh, Metaspace can be used, for example, for co-assembly, but not really for individual assembly. So today, for, for these tutorials, we will use the, the Mega8 with the individual assembly approach. Let me go back to uh, check if all the data has been downloaded. So it's still uh, loading. Um, so what I can do is I can try to see if it's uh, already able to run mega hit. So even if it's loading, we can probably already launch the next step. So um, one thing you can do is if you search, you can search for mega hit here because we you can find it here. Another thing you can do, uh, thanks to the integration of the training material directly in Galaxy, if you click on Mega It here, it loads already directly the tools in the middle panel here. And uh, then what we need to do is to select which type of input we have. So here, in this case, we have paired collection. So we want to use a paired collection. I'll just go back to my history. I want to run it individually, and as you see, uh, I need to wait a bit longer because uh, the the collection is not correctly detected. Once all the data set will be downloaded, then the collection will be uh, available here. So it should be okay. So I just uh, uh, do a small... Um, I will ask you to wait a few more minutes to, until it's done. Uh, all the data uh, here. I see in forward, in reverse, if I click here, I have the FastQ singer, so I really have a FastQ file here. So, and if I click on Mega Eat, now I can select the paired collection, so the read. Um, so, and we definitely need to select run individually. So if you click there, then you run individually. So if you want to run it as a co-assembly, you can say click merge all FastQs paired and that will m m run everything in a co-assembly mode. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to select the row reads uh, and we want to specify um, the camera list. So the camera will be the... the so what uh, Megahit is doing is trying to build a Debring graph. So a Debring graph... Um, do we have an overview of what is a Debring graph? I think it's there on the top. For the strategy. So we have the Dublin graph. So the reads are divided in cameras. So camera it's a like string of length k. Um, and then uh, we try to build a camera graph. So linking the cameras uh, together. If they, uh, so 
putting all the cameras together from all the reads, trying to build the camera graphs and, and select a path through the through the through these graphs afterwards. So for example here we see this one and this one are connected. Uh, this one and this one are connected. Um, because I mean they are similar, so here and then you have the same here, and then once you have that, you can also um, uh, combine them um, because of overlaps. So you see that here you have eighty. See where is it? Uh, you can combine them once with that once afterwards, so you can merge that once plus afterward that once because there is this uh, graphs here and then that combines with the one afterwards so you can really try to build a path to create the longer reads afterwards but the first part um, for, for doing it it's to cut your read into ca in the in the cameras so in the strings of length k so in this case we want to select a specific camera size so 20 uh, the minimum camera size uh, so yeah, uh, Megahit is using an approach where it tries several camera size to build the graphs and try to identify the, the context based on that. So here we have a, a length 21 for the minimum camera size and 91 for the things with an iteration of 12. So it's what we want to set up here. So to do that, uh, we do a specified min max, so 21 we say 91 and a, thigh, a camera iteration of 12. I think that are the things. And then once we have that, we can launch uh, Mega 8. Again, Mega 8 will take a lot of time to run um, because uh, first it needs a lot of resources to run. So it's a tool that may require a lot of memories and we don't have a lot of um, nodes, at least on uh, Galaxy Europe, uh, where you can run that, so you need to wait until these nodes, uh, these nodes to, for the cluster are available to run the things, the the, the tools, um, and it's why it's grey and it will stay grey for some time time point. After what the running itself, because it's short data sets, should be okay. Should mean be not that long, um, and uh, so uh, yeah, so it will take some time to run. Yeah, and uh, so it will produce a collection of outputs. So if you look already at what is there, we will see that we have one file, one outputs per uh, per sample. So it will be a contig file. So it will be a fastq file or fasta file, sorry, with the contigs um, that are expected for this sample. Um, and then this data set can be uh, uh, used afterwards, so that are the contexts, and they can be used afterwards for, for example, for binnings, uh, for the replication, for any step that go after the assembly. And so, as I said, they contain the, they contain the context, so contiguous length of, uh, uh, contiguous sequences of a certain length, um, and that have a certain degree of similarity. Uh, Metaspace can also output scaffold. So what uh, what does not mega it to? So uh, scaffolds are uh, like uh, contigs plus. So they are contigs that are uh, together that are combined together, but with a with a um, a gap in between. So contigs are a sequence contiguous sequence, and where we know all the the sec the Basis, so we know each base pairs in a context. In a scaffold, we combine different contexts together, but with in the middle a, uh, a length, um, a certain part, a gap of length, a known length, but we don't know exactly what are the different uh, uh, base pairs that we can find here. Um, it can happen, we can, we know, we, we can evaluate, we can build scaffold because uh, the gaps we know that for example when we have parent data we know that the, the the parent data the reverse and the forward doesn't usually overlap we know that there is a distance between that and we can use this information to build this this scaffold here yeah, together um, it's also apparent when um, yeah it's mostly that here so uh, and, and we can we know the estimation of the of the number of base pair or bases between the two the two contexts 
Um, so a recommendation, so because the assembly, uh, okay, I forgot to, it too will take around one hour to, to, to run. And uh, things you can do is to import, we already run the assembly for you. So you can run the, you can ex import the, uh, the content that has been generated uh, by doing the same approach as before. So you, you go to upload data. Uh, so first, uh, again, I'm sorry, I was too fast here. Um, close. So again, if you go there, you click here, you click on copy here. So you, you have the, the, the link there. You copy, then you go here. Oops, again, the wrong one, data, upload data. You pass fetch data, you can pass through your read here, and you can start the download from Zenodo to uh, your history. Um, then you can close and you can create a collection again here. You can select the one here because we want to them to have them organized as a collection. Uh, for all the eight selected, we want to build a dataset list. We have only one uh, it, uh, data for things. So and then what we want to do is having the name. So we want to keep that one. Um, sorry. So we need to do that. But I just want to rename them. I want to just keep the sample name, so I need to remove to rename them. To remove the context faster here. Yeah, same. Here again. And you can run, oh, you need to have all selected. And mega it output. And you can create a collection again. Oh, it will appear again. Hopefully. <laughs> here, mega it output. And here it should download here. Um, so the output of Megait, as I said, is a FASTA file, and, and, and from this FASTA file we can identify how many contexts has been uh, found for the, this sample or for another sample, so for 68 or for 72, and what is the minimum length of the context. Of, of, of context. So it's again loading, so I cannot, I will wait a bit until it's done. And I will come back. So either you manage to uh, get the Zenodo data, or you can also wait until the mega it is done and do something else in parallel. So I recommend you to either take a break, um, an hour, one hour break, or to to go for a coffee, or to look at what is the next tutorial that you will need, you want to follow after that. It's now uploaded. So the output from the things we already press prepare for you is available here and if you see uh, the context here so you have a FASTA file and you have here the number of sequences so for example for these samples we have uh, 122,000 sequences so it means 122,000 contexts for this sample and for example for this one here we have the double of context for this sequence. The context, the next question, what, what is the minimum length of the context? The minimum length, I think, will be definitely... Oh, I don't know the answers, to be honest. Ah, uh, so the sequence seems to be bigger than 200 base pair, the length that uh, is attributed in the sequence information in the FASTA file. Okay, I don't know where is this information. Ah, it's probably in the output. Uh, we need to wait until the mega it is finished to be able to see this information. Sorry for that. Um, oh, uh, no, sorry. Wrong, 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 wrong. Here. So we are here. So if you want to do the co-assembly with Metaspace, we have an explanation here how to run that. It's quite similar. Not that many differences here. 
So once we do the assembly, um, before going further and do, for example, binnings or other steps, uh, it's good to check the quality of the assembly. Um, and there is tools for that, for example, MetaQuast, which is a, a dedicated tool for... So Quast is famous for... for it's known for uh, reporting assembly for, for, for assembly quality, to run quality control for assembly. Uh, and it has a metagenomics mode and it's called MetaQuast. Um, and for that, so we need to, to do that, we need to we will run MetaQuast. Uh, so we click on Quast. Oh, why it's not loading every time? I don't know what it's doing it. It's doing, it's not loading the towel itself. Okay, let's find it in another way so you can search for Quast here. Um, then when you have quests, you say which type of mode you add. So here we add an individual um, assembly mode. Um, then you can uh, say, uh, no, I want to use uh, the data sets names. So the names in my in my collections when I use, uh, I select the correct collection. So I could already run on the assembly formigate. Um, so directly the one that we 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 are currently building or uh, uh, running. Um, it will just wait until this one is done to start the quest. Um, so I can do that. Um, then uh, the question is, do you have to read options? So I think we said yes, we want to give. Uh, so we have paired and in a collection with the raw read. So the idea is, uh, with when you do, do give the read options, it will map again the assembly to the original reads to the assembly to try to identify uh, how many, how much of the of the original reads has been used to build the context. So which type of assembly do we have? So we have metagenomes here, um, and uh, then it will uh, try to identify and do some uh, early quick taxonomy affiliation of the sequences um, to, to, to see if we see also some differences in the quality based on the taxonomy. So if, for example, for specific bacteria, uh, maybe the quality is worse than for some other things, maybe because of low abundance or other things. So it generates, um, if you if you give a reference genome and you select, for example, uh, uh, the Silva database, it will map the context on the Silva database and try to do the quality control for only the read that maps to a specific taxon, uh, for example. So here we select the Silva database um, then all the other ones you don't care really, and uh, what, uh, which outputs do we want? So I think we want all the outputs here. Uh, HTML report, PDF report, tabular report, log file, and everything. And then once it's ready, you can run on the tools. And as I said, so in my case, I, I use uh, this one as an input, so it will wait until this one is done to launch Quast. And again, Quast also takes an awful long time to run, to be honest. So don't be, don't, it's normal if it takes a lot of time, so have a break, take a break there. Oh, okay, it's running, it takes time. Um, the other things you can do is also import the report the HTML report that has been generated by Quast, if you want to go faster. Um, and um, here in my side, I move to another history where I already run the Quast, so I can show you the result. So um, so it's a, really the same thing, so the raw data assembly, and then I run the Quast uh, directly. Uh, Quast generates several files and the, the several outputs and the one that is the most interesting in our case is this HTML report. And especially, so let's open one, it will create a, a report where uh, you see if you open it, you click here, it will open the report in the bottom, you can um, here, you see that on the top, I will just, uh, so 
will show you something. So if you want to go to see it better, you can uh, put here on the left and click on the really top, uh, bottom left here to hide the toolbar here because we don't really need the, hide the bottom bar here. So what is doing Quast? So Quast is creating a report and an HTML report with on the top you have some statistics, then you have some plots and you have some references here. Um, and so we can go through the through the reports and the first things we see is this genome fraction. So the genome fraction, as it's explained here, is the number of, of the percentage of bases uh, of, 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 of the original uh, read that has been aligned to the context. So here it's uh, seven, uh, 25 percent or 25 percent of the read. Um, and the basis has been uh, aligned to the context. So what is uh, the question is what is the genome fraction for uh, seven, uh, 68 and 72? Um, and because I will have usually to <laughs> always uh, questions where I want to compare two samples, for example, the report of two samples, what I do is I can use the window manager here, so I click on the top here on the on the window manager to have this uh, bottom this um, checkbox here, and I click on the report that I want. So it's sixty eight and seventy two. Here, can you open also the seventy two? So and then I can have the report side by side here. If you see, and I think I can expand it to the bottom of my here. And here, so then I can really compare the things. So here, in this case, in sixty-eight, thirty percent of of the of the original bases are aligned to the reference to the ah no, it's the number of bases of the context um, that are aligned to reference. Did ah, I feel confused now? Oh, I cannot do that and that in parallel. Okay. Percentage of aligned bases in the reference. A base in the reference genome is contig as aligned if at least one context has at least one line alignment to the to these bases. So what we did is we didn't provide any reference, but MetaQuest tried to identify uh, by aligning against the SIBA database. And, and then it, 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 it tried to identify, so for each identified genome, the genome fraction is given for uh, by here. So if you see, so for this, uh, ah, yeah, true. So if we take this, uh, these organisms here, 10% of this, of, of, this ba of, this, of the basis of this organism, so in the reference database, are uh, found in the context. If we take this leconostoc pseudo blah 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 whatever, 84% of the bases of these organisms are found in the context. And if we look at the other, um, we have one where we have 90. So lactobacillus. So the reference genome of lactobacillus uh, is found 90% 90 of the of the bases in the reference genome of lactobacillus are found in the context. So it's what is mentioned here. Um, so it's lactobacillus and uh, leconostoc as we say it here. Oh, I think it's a, there is a mistake here. Then uh, there is another thing which is called the duplication ratio. It's the total of, of line. Um, so do we have a duplication? Do we have some, some basis that I found several times? And here the duplication ratio is quite low. So we don't have a really... Uh, um, so if we, for example, we have a contic, uh, we have many contacts that cover exactly the same region in the reference, we have a, a ratio that is much higher than one. Here we are close to one, so we are covering um, regularly the things. Then we have other um, information again, for like the NGA50 or other things. 
But here we will focus on the read mapping. So here uh, we talk about the map. So we took the raw reads, so the one that has been used to generate the assembly, and we map them to the context. So at least Quest did it. And, um, and then we com compute the percentage of reads that are mapped to the assembly. So in this case, um, we have an almost 80% of the basis in the raw reads that are found in context. So it means a lot of the, of the reads have been used for generating the, con the context. Here, same. So we have a left, only a small leftover here. Ah, I will not manage to do that. Um, and yeah. So it means that uh, if we have a percentage, it means that 90% of the reads has been used for generating the, the assembly. Okay, next point is the misassemblies. So when uh, misassemblies is when there is uh, errors uh, that has been done during the assembly. So uh, Quast has the possibility to identify misassemblies by mapping the context to the reference genome of the organism that has been identified before. And, and using that, three types of um, misassemblies can be identified. For example, the relocation. So it's mean, so for example, we have this context in blue and that is made of two parts, the blue part and the green part. And we see that uh, we have the chromosome one and chromosome two. So when we have relocation, um, it means that uh, no, um, when the mapping of, of, two, sec of two parts uh, are of the same chromosome, but they are maybe separated by an um, unmapped region uh, here. Or they map on the same chromosome, but with the uh, overlaps between the two parts that they mapped. So for example, they, they map here, and here, and there is an overlap between the two parts that are mapped here. So that is the first part of, of the, the first things we can look. How many relocation can we find? And to get that, we need to click on misassemblies. Uh, oh, wait, where is, uh, no, I think we need to click on exp extended. And here we see there. So we have, uh, if you click here on the bottom again, if you click on extended report here, and you scroll up again, you have the number of misassemblies. So I need to. Do. And we have the number of relocations. So we have 78 relocation. We have a lot. We have 187 uh, misassemblies, 78 relocation, and more than 150 for, for the other sample. Um, then the, there is another thing that could appear is what is called a translocation. So when, when a context is uh, mapped to several locations, so when part of the context can be mapped on different chromosomes or different organisms, like here in blue. So you see the blue part is mapped on the chromosome one and the, and the uh, green part on the chromosome two. It can be chromosome one or reference one, reference two. Um, and how many relocation has been found for the sample? So we can see we have uh, 80, uh, 20, 25, 60, uh, 55. Um, and for which we are, for which organisms do we have that? I think we need to expand that. So we see a lot for Leconostoc here. And for the translocation, sorry, here we have a lot. So we have, it's a mix between lactylobacillus and this vix, vix, vaccino, blah, 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 whatever. And then we have some calls that are interspecies translocation. So the inter, interspecies is when the translocation um, appears between organisms. So it's... Um, uh, so, the translocation can be on different chromosomes, for example, uh, of an organism, so of a plasmid and the chromosome. The interspecies translocation is when the context maps on different organisms, so part of the context maps on different organisms. That is a difference. And another thing that can appear is the inversions. So here we see that the context is going in this direction with the, with the arrow there. Um, in the same direction for both part, but when we map, we see that the blue is going in this direction and the and the green in the other direction. So it's it's an inversion of the of the things, and we see that we have a really low numbers of inversion in both cases. 
Um, then another thing that uh, that uh, is recorded in in the report is the mismatches. So mismatches, um, are, I think that um, uh, mismatch between when we do the alignments on the read of the context and the reference. So when um, there is a change from A to a T or something like this, um, and we see that the numbers are quite okay. Yeah, and we can see that there is differences between the different organisms. Yeah, it's a bit lower for the, the other sample um, than for the first one. And then uh, um, it generates also, quas also generate context without references. So if we didn't provide uh, any refer reference or any reads to map to, quas will anyway report that. So the number of contexts, so here we see that we have a um, higher number of contexts and if you see the numbers are different from the one we saw in the FASTA file because here the quest is reporting only the contexts above a certain threshold. Um, so it reports um, it report only the one above a 500 base pair. Um, and if we want to really see uh, the full numbers, we need to see uh, this. So this one is the one that uh, so above uh, zero base pairs will give you the same numbers as the number of sequences in the ma in the mag mega eight outputs. Yeah. Yep. And then we have information about which what is the largest context. So here we have a uh, context with. Uh, 63,000 base pair and in this case the largest context is almost the same size. Um, then we have information about the N50, so the length for which the collection of all contexts of that length or longer cover at least half of the assembly. I really, really struggle always a lot with this N50. I know it's it's a it's a, a metric that is used a lot in assembly. Um, so it, it somehow defines the assembly quality in terms of contiguity. So if all the context of an assembly is ordered by length, so if you have uh, the context of the lowest, the shortest contig on the on the left side, on the top, and the longest on the bottom, the N50 will be uh, the minimum length of the contig, th such that uh, it contains 50% of the assembled basis. So, for example, you have um, it means that if you have an N50 of 10,000 base pair, it means that 50% of the assembled uh, assembled bases are contained in are contained in contexts of at least 50 uh, 10,000 base pair. So, another example here that is described here. Let's assume that we have nine contexts of lengths two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight, nine, ten. So the sum of all the lengths is uh, 50, if, if, if 40, uh, 54. If we take the half, it's uh, 27. And if we sum up 8, 9 and 10, it's 27. So N50 is 8. So it's the size of the contig for which at least along, along the largest contig that contains half of the sequence of a particular genome. So here we have half of the sum is seven is twenty seven, and if we start from the beginning, so from this one to this one, and we go below the this twenty seven, then it's this one. So here, ten plus nine, it's uh, uh, nineteen. Uh, so yeah, nineteen, and then plus eight, twenty seven. 27, it's exactly the same as alpha of the sum, so it means that um, N50 is, if, if, is 8. Uh, so in our case, we have an N50 of um, almost 1000, and here uh, more than 1000 for the second sample, so it means that all, <laughs> um, at least Half of the bases of 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 assembled bases are in context of at least this size, 
And for the 950, 90, uh, 9, 9, uh, N90, it's the same ID, but, but not with a, a threshold of 50, but a threshold of 90%. So it means that 90% um, of the assembled bases are in context of at least uh, 50, 400 bases. It's complicated. So when we compare 1950, N50 values for different assemblies, um, so we need to have the same uh, assembly size to be sure that we can compare the things. So um, the 950 alone is not really a useful measure to, to, to assess the quality of an assembly. For example, if you have different uh, here, you have different length size, but the both have the same N50 but one are really more contiguous than the other one. Another thing you can uh, do is you look at the L50. So the number of contigs equal or longer to that N50. So for example, if the minimum uh, number of contigs that cover half of the assembly. So if we take these cases, uh, L50 is 3. So L50 for here is this one and really lower for the second uh, sample. Another thing we can ha we have access with this uh, quest is the Icarus Icarus contact browser. So if you click on the really top of the quest result and you click on view on in Icarus uh, context, so you have first a report and and then um, you can click on on the contact uh, size viewer the top here, contig size viewer again, um, and then you will be able to look at the context. Um, here, and we can look at, oh, I think I need to make it bigger here, and if I want to until here, so not the full length, but only here. Ah, oh, sorry, I copy pass. I didn't copy pass, so I want to look at here. Ah, sorry, here. So here between um, zero and so the contigs are organ are ordered by size from the biggest to the lowest, to the to from the longest to the shortest, and then if if we look um, and 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 then you you concatenate them. And here you see that um, you, you can inspect the contigs one by one if you want. You can also look at if they are correct contigs. Uh, it means that they, they, they are aligned uh, on, on the reference genome. You can see on which reference genome they are aligned here if you click on it. You can see the, the gray, it means that they are not aligned. Here in red, you have the misassembly and you know uh, you can identify which type of misassembly here. We have a translocation here. Uh, and the first one, why is this one? So this one is um, has some parts that are aligned and some that are not aligned. So it's why it's in white. And, and then uh, the first page, if you want to go back to the main menu here, you have on the first page, you can even look at the context for each reference genome here. Um, so here, if you look at the context aligned to this organism, specific organisms here, uh, you can open the viewer and, and look at the context and the most cover context. So um, the organism, the contexts on the top are organized by how, where, how they map to the reference, and the colors are again explain are explained here on the right. Uh, so at least here. So you can uh, zoom again on certain uh, section here. Oops, nope, wrong. Um, I think I took the wrong one. I did, I wanted to take the Leuconocost because it's the one that have the most context. So here you can see, you can you can zoom, you can 
a look at the context themselves. You can see where they are in the reference genome, so you can move around the reference genome. Um, and the different colors means uh, the type of, of, of context we have. Uh, the red blocks mean that we have a misassembly and the graph on the bottom here you can see um, it's, it's the GC percent on the right and the coverage on the, on the left side, so in blue. Uh, once you did that, another thing you can do is looking at the visualization of the de novo assembly graphs um, and using um, bondage for that, so we have an explanation here how to do that. Um, if you want to look how the, the graphs look like, so we did it, and you see all the contexts, how the contexts are combined. It's quite hard to see these pictures, but you see here you have a long context, so the longest context, and then you have the different contexts and the different uh, branch that appears there. So you can do that and you have some questions here. So um, I think we are we we are at the end of this tutorial. So I hope you 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 all learn a bit about the metagenomic assembly and what can be done, uh, especially to obtain the genome of species, or, for example, or organisms that are found in your samples. And we know that uh, metagenomic assembly is complex, um, but there and there are different approaches, like the Dupin graph approach. Uh, there is different strategy for doing metagenomic assembly, like co-assembly or individual assembly, and different tools like Metaspace or Omega-8. And once your choice is made, um, you can start by assemble the context together, set the quality, and visualize the graphs afterwards. And then, once you are uh, sure about the quality of your of your data, then uh, of the context, then you can move forward for the next step. For example, doing the binding. Um, and there will be there will be a tutorial for that available. Then I think I'm done with that, and I hope you learned something, and hope to see you around. Thank you.